Hello and welcome back to the channel CAD with Jordan. In today's video we'll cover the direct edit tool which also happens to be my favourite tool in Inventor due to the fact that it's extremely versatile. If you're new to Inventor then this video should help you out a ton. The link in the description will too. This will take you to my course for beginners looking to build their CAD skills off the ground so that they can begin designing things for themselves. Anyways, the direct edit tool is so versatile that I've had to prepare this little model right here that includes all the correct characteristics so that I can show every faucet of the tool without needing to constantly make new models. So to find the direct edit tool you'll be looking to the top of the screen in the modify section and looking for the button marked direct. After you've selected the tool an interface appears of which you can then drag around using this grip here at the top left of it all. The direct edit tool is used purely as a way to edit an existing model and cannot be used on a blank canvas. Number one of the five modes in the direct edit tool is the move option and this is typically selected by default. This is somewhat simple and works similarly to the extrude command. The way to use this is to select a face and after selecting a face you'll see that a arrow will appear on it allowing you to move that face along a set axis dependent on which arrow it is that you pick and then the rest of the model will adapt to fit that. So pulling it up nothing happens, pulling it to the side nothing is really going to happen but you'll see that when I pull it outwards I can then adapt the whole model and you'll see that it all updates together and you'll see that even this feature the hole inside of it the chamfers the fillet here they've all been carried on along with the direct edit tool this doesn't only have to be used on the faces this can also be used on different features such as holes or circular bodies to reposition them so you'll see i've selected this hole right here and i can just reposition it down two and a half mil and now you'll see it's completely different something else worth noting is that when using the direct edit tool is that you can actually use the locate button found right here underneath the move and the faces buttons this can only be used when you've actually already got a face selected but once you press locate you can then put it onto a different angle if I wanted to move this hole then I could use the locate button and then change it onto this angled surface and this will then let me change which angle I'll be using the tool at after you started moving the arrows you can then input a specific parameter if you'd like a more precise outcome rather than simply moving the feature roughly where it needs to be and remember this can only be accessed once you've moved the arrows a little bit first then you can and put some numbers in. You can also use the locate button found in the menu to change the angle that the tool is going to be used at but this can only be accessed once the face has been selected. So I selected my hole right here and then I used the locate button on this angle and now I can change the angle of which this tool is working. Before moving on to the second size command as you can see here I'd like to point out that this tool can be used on multiple faces at the same time to cohesively make direct edits when used in this way the model can adapt to conform to the newly placed features. So if I was to select multiple of these and then bring it up you'll see that they've all moved together whereas if I was to only select the top of this circle here this is the outcome so yes it moves everything cohesively and all together moving on to the second part of it number two the size mode the next option is the size command and this will work in exactly the same way if you use it on a flat face as the move version of this tool hence why i had to prepare this model with these somewhat random features in order to truly display what the direct edit tool is capable of so if you use the size version of the tool on a radius or a curved edge then you'll be able to increase and decrease the size of the radius this can sometimes act quite unpredictably as you've seen just here it's uh, only doing like half of it and it's unlikely that you wanted to do the whole thing due to the fact that it's quite unpredictable that's why you might want to make sure that the preview button here is always toggled on so right now my preview isn't on I have like a wireframe but it's a lot easier to understand when the preview button is toggled on remember the size command can be only used on curved surfaces to make them bigger but also smaller too so I'll use it on this hole right here and it works in the same way. Anyway, moving on to number three. The scale tool is extremely straightforward while it's being used uniformly. Simply select the body you're looking to scale. Once you've selected, you'll notice that it automatically selects the entire model. After selecting the model, you can then change the number in this input field right here. A one in this input field will result in no change whatsoever because it already has a scale factor of one. Changing it to 0.5 or half will half the size of everything the model and therefore changing the number to 2 will double the size of everything in the model. Now as I mentioned beforehand there is a part 
part of the scale tool that gets confusing and messy quickly, so I'd avoid using the non-uniform version, which can be accessed through this drop-down menu here. But for those who would like to know, it works in a similar way, except you can change the scale factor for each of the X, Y, and Z axes to create some real distorted looking models. So I'm just gonna mess around with the numbers here, keep them somewhat close to one so that it doesn't get massive. You'll see like if I put 20 in, it's getting too big to handle. But yeah, here you go. This is with 3.8 and 0.5 and I've got quite a distorted model. It doesn't look like it's something that I've made an inventor. I've never found a reason to use this, but feel free to comment below a use for this if you've ever found one. I'm just going to promptly delete it. Moving on to the next part of the direct edit tool. That is number four, the rotate part of this tool. And this tool can be confusing at first, but once used a few times, it quickly becomes usable. Now the point that you select with this tool is crucial since it's going to be the center point for your angle. And you'll see as I start moving my cursor around, all of your different points become available to you. So using it in the center of this model and then applying a rotation will result in the top or bottom half being reduced while the other side is increased. You'll see the top part is being increased right here and the bottom part is getting reduced and vice versa. So if we go back and then select a different point, and here we're going to select a point that is at the very top. Now you'll see that we can choose to add material for the entirety of the part or reduce material for the entirety of the part. And this is why the point that you pick is so crucial. And something that you've obviously probably picked up on by now is that this shape that shows up once you've selected your point can be clicked and dragged to create your rotate effect. And once again, once it's been dragged, a input field will appear, allowing you to put in more precise measurements. And much like the move part of this tool we covered at the start, you can use the locate part of this tool once you've selected a face. And this will allow you to get access to angles that are not quite your ordinary as you can see. Anyway, that covers all the useful parts of this tool. We're going on to number five, which is the delete face part of this tool. And as you can tell, I'm not a big fan of it. It's, it's not very useful. So lastly, and definitely leastly, here we have the delete face portion of this tool. And guess what? It deletes faces. <laughs> it didn't even work. There you go, it deletes faces. This could be useful if you're creating, say, a lock where all the important stuff is happening inside the model, but there's much better ways to slice the model rather than deleting faces that you'd eventually have to put back. So yeah, this one's useless to me. And just so you know, we can come to the view tab and then we can do a half section view and then click on our face and move this arrow. And now you can see we can actually cut inside of it without having to delete faces. And this can just simply be toggled on and off with the click of a button. If you made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and check out the course on the Udemy if you'd like to level up your CAD skills. Thank you very much for watching.